So let's take a look at some of these procedures that we do. Endoscopic third ventriculostomy is the most common one that you're likely to see. Um, uh, it's for obstructive hydrocephalus. Here we can see the cerebral aqueduct is obstructed, ventricles are big, floor of the third ventricle is bowed down. And what we wanna do is make a new hole. Can't get out here, let's want, make one here, let's poke, okay? When we get into the third ventricle, there's some more anatomy we need to be familiar with, okay? Um, when we take a look, we can sit here, we can see the apex of the basal artery through the thin floor. X marks the spot, that's where we're going. Probably don't wanna go into the mammillary bodies or midbrain, that's bad form. And the dorsum cella or the back of, uh, really the back of the cella, uh, the clivus is visible here. And what we wanna do is poke through. Um, we can see the clivus now, the basal artery. Um, and this is what the hole looks like. What's that look like in real time? Let's see if videos are gonna work. Here we go. So we'll talk you through, no, we won't talk you through. I think you may have to take your cursor and turn it off the uh, laser pointer setting in order to get the uh, video to play for you. How do I do that? Okay, just do that. There we go. Okay, so now we're coming down through. I'm going to talk quickly because we got to move through the frame of Monroe. We can see this blush up here is the infundibular recess. That's actually the optic chiasm at the top of the screen. We're going to poke a hole through the floor of the third ventricle here. Here's our poke. Now we're going to want to make that ultimately bigger. So we're gonna go down through with a balloon, dilate that up. There are a lot of schools of thought in terms of how best to do this. Some people like to sort of dilate the hole. Um, they're concerned that if you put traction back, you can grab a perforating vessel, always bad form. Um, but I will tell you, it's what I do. I've never had a problem with that personally. Um, and we go down through and we take a look um, and uh, there's big red right there. That's the basal artery and the perforators probably leave those alone. Um, and that operation is very effective at treating uh, obstructive hydrocephalus. Um, we'll come back through with our endoscope. We'll say, yep, fornix, all those veins, everything looks good, and we're done. It's a quick operation. You can do this in less than 10 minutes once you get uh, um, uh, used to it. Um, there are other operations that we do, though. Here's a child who has a, a, an arachnoid cyst sitting within the third ventricle. Um, and we want to pop that uh, so that we can equalize pressures and reestablish CSF flow. Um, this is uh, not the world's greatest optics for this case, but we can take a look. Uh, there's the cyst within the foramen of Monroe. Again, we can see the septal vein choroid plexus, um, as well as uh, seeing the thalamus striate vein again. Um, and you know, the, uh, how, how we pop these is pretty straightforward. It's cauterize the capsule and poke our way down through this. This is not elegant or sexy surgery, uh, uh, but it's effective. And so, and once we do that and we pop on through, Okay, uh, we can use uh, really just traction and cautery to enlarge that hole. You can see me sort of grabbing and uh, enlarging it here, pulling forward, there we go. Um, and is that effective for us? Well, it's certainly in this case, sort of backing back out through. Okay, now we can see that's down away from the frame of Monroe. We go, we'll go through a septostomy here to look on the other side. Okay, looks good. That's retracted away from the other foramen and let's get out of Dodge. Um, and then finally, you know, grab. Uh, there are definitely are circumstances where uh, pineal tumors are classic for this. This will be uh, uh, something you'll talk about in your breakout sessions later on uh, uh, today. But if you've got an intraventricular tumor, you want to know what it is and you want to uh, get that answer to guide treatment because there are circumstances where um, eat some form of adjuvant therapy is a better way to go. Let's go in there and grab a piece of that. Um, we can do that in the anterior third ventricle like we do here, okay? Um, this is a, a, a supercellar, uh, ultimately germ cell tumor. Um, uh, and you can see, again, grabbing a piece of this in the third ventricle and bringing it on out, you get small specimens, but you get appropriate specimen for a diagnosis. That's a very small amount of blood, uh, believe me. Uh, you, can, uh, you can see a lot more than that in ventriculosity and you just irrigate your way out of it. There are also times where we can go back to the pineal region. This is a low frontal trajectory. You can see the blue trajectory here where it's a lower incision um, to go through. The concept is the same, going up there and you'll see a pair of grabbers and you can imagine how that works. Key pearls to this, really important to keep your eyes on the screen at all times. You take them away, um, you're not paying attention. You're gonna take that scope and you're gonna have it somewhere like the brainstem you don't wanna be. The other thing is you can't always see what's going on. That proximal scope, so where you are 
okay, up here on the scope as opposed to at the tip. You can see what's going on here. You won't see here, and you can absolutely do a traction injury. So be aware that the proximal scope can be a problem. And then finally, trajectory matters. And the long axis that you, the longest axis that you move through with CSF, the more maneuverability you have. This is a diagram from Peter Nakaji. Um, that's a great diagram illustrating that. That shows the approach trajectory here, gives you visibility of the vascular supply of this small tumor. Whereas if you're coming in from this trajectory from the top, you can't see anything uh, that you need to see. So trajectory absolutely matters when it comes to uh, 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 neuro, um, uh, 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 endoscopic approaches. So in summary, surgical anatomy of the ventricular system, we went over very quickly. It's going to require some study on your part of reviewing this. Um, that's okay. Um, we've all been there. We've all done it. It's important work to do. But this will give you some basics of the endoscopic uh, setup in the room, how we get in, and then just thinking, what do we do? We poke, pop it. Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.